Okay, hopefully we're pros now at event listeners, those click events, and now we're going to learn more about HTML input and output. I'd like to go back to the pizza order program we made, and we're going to add the GUI, the graphical user interface, which will be our website. So we'll get input elements, how can we get input from the user, and then how can we change the content of the page. Okay, so I'm going to open up my pizza order with code, VS Code, and we left off right here where we had the button, so that's good. And it would prompt this, uh, do the prompts and the alerts. Let's run this just to make sure we left it in working condition. Open up our console. Okay, everything's good here. Place order. Yeah. Okay. Blah blah. blah. Type stuff in. There we go. Okay. Now we want to make it so that there's no pop-up windows. All of the code happens on the website here. Place an order for a fabulous pizza. Great. Um, let's go to our HTML first, and let's change this actually to a H3. Okay, place oops, slash H3. And before we do the button, let's do a paragraph. And in this paragraph, it's going to be, uh, we'll say size. And then we need to do a new element called an input element. So I'm going to let uh, Emmett do the work for me. I'm just going to type input and hit tab. And um, if I save this now, it'll add the slash here. Prettier adds that slash because an input element is a self-closing um, element, just like an image um, or an HR or whatever. So there's no opening and closing tag. It's just an input element. And input elements can have different types. The default is to have the type of text, which means they're going to type text into there. Um, I'm not going to go into the other types right now just yeah it's an input text box okay uh, let's see what that looks like all right it says the word size and then here's my input element now we can style this in our css all we want you can add padding and change the font size and do this and that i'm just going to leave it for now because um, the main focus here is on not that um, i'm going to hit Control c on this line and Control v because i want another input um, we'll say topping one, control C, control V, topping two. Okay. And then, yeah, so there's the input elements. And then when I press the button, it still runs this code. I got to stop that. Um, and then we would like, instead of all those prompts, right, we'll get the values from here and then we'll output the result right here. Uh, let's do below the button. Let's make this little. There's my title. Here I'll say here's my my order form kind of, and then here's the uh, confirm order section. And I'll just do another H3 that says your order, and then we'll do a paragraph. And right now I'm just going to put some dashes in there because there is no order to start off with. Right, it's that this is we're going to replace these dashes with their order. Let me just zoom. I'm going to control and zoom in a little bit here just to make that bigger. Okay, um, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so step number one let's actually do this step first. Let's um, change the output. So we'll still use the prompt function to get the inputs. But instead of alerting the message, let's try to change the content of this. Now, in order to change the content um, of this paragraph, we need this paragraph to have an ID. So I'm just going to give it the ID of output. Okay? There we go. That's where my output's going to go. And again, what I want to show you is if I go to the console here and do that document.get element by ID output it gets me a reference to that paragraph okay if I were to do that and add a dot inner HTML okay dot inner HTML so we so we get that paragraph element the dot inner HTML accesses a string see the quotation that's a string with three hyphens in it three dashes in it and that's what that is. That's the inner HTML 
of this paragraph, right? Here's the inner HTML. So we can use the inner HTML to get the value of the inner HTML, but we can also use the inner HTML and just, uh, this is basically, it's like a variable, right? It's storing the inner HTML of that. We can assign it, right? Remember when we did variables, right? Let, let size be assigned, whatever this is. So I'm going to go here and say inner HTML is assigned, and I'm just going to do the string hello. And watch the paragraph here. The inner HTML, inner HTML should change to hello. Cool. So that's how we can do output to the page, right? We can change the output of the page or change the content of the page by setting the inner HTML of elements to be certain values. Okay. So instead of this alert, we're going to go document.getElementById output and say, hey, inner HTML, I want to assign you to be the message. Ta-da! If I save that, saved, and I go back here, if I place my order, a large pizza with cheese and uh, bacon. Your large pizza with cheese and bacon will be ready soon. Okay, so that message gets displayed as the inner HTML of this element. Yay! Okay, let's just double check, right? You can see the paragraph, right? This paragraph, the ID output, that's its inner HTML now. Awesome. Now it's the dashes. Okay. All right, so now the next step. That's the output. That's pretty cool, right? Display the message on the screen, not in this pop-up window. Now, instead of the prompt, what I'd like to do is get the value of these input elements. Okay. Now, when we do an input element, we have this type attribute. We can actually also give it a value attribute. Um, and I'm going to say maybe the default size is medium. Maybe topping one, we'll do a value attribute of pepperoni. If I spell it right, pepperoni. And here we'll give it a value of um, mushrooms. Okay, so if I save that and I go back here, you'll notice that these input elements, because I gave the HTML those value attributes, that's what's inside of these elements. That's their value. Okay, and if I were to go into here, Oh, I have no way to get these input elements, right? I can go document .get element by ID, but they don't have IDs. Okay, so I need to go to these input elements and give them an ID attribute. This will be size, I'm going to go size hyphen in. Uh, ID equals top one in. Oh, let's just spell it out. Top in one. ID equals topping two in. And I like to add the in sometimes just to remind myself that when I'm getting this element, it's an input element. Okay. Um, okay, we'll save that. And now that I these these elements have that, I can go size in, and that's gonna get me that input element. And if I go dot value. That's going to give me the value, like what's inside of it, as a string. Now, of course, the user could edit this. Or, oh, I actually want a large. And now when I go dot value, it'll give me large or small, etc. Okay, so it just that, that value attribute, when I go dot value, it gives me whatever the value attribute is of this input element. Um, and we can give them initial values. I'm actually not going to give them initial values. I'm going to encourage the user to choose their own thing. Okay, we don't need to have that there. So it's empty. So now if I try to do, it gives me the empty string, right? It's empty. So, all right. Um, okay, so where are we? We're going to go back to main.js. We're not going to do these prompt functions. Instead, we're going to go document get on by ID size in dot value. Okay dot value. 
get that element, that input element, access its value attribute, and that'll get me whatever the user has typed into the input element and save it in this variable. That's it. Replace this with document.getElementById topping one in dot value. And I should just copy and paste, but that's okay. This autocomplete stuff makes it pretty fast. Topping two in dot value. And that should do it. When I with this button has an event listener, so that when I click it, it'll run this function. When I run this function, I'm going to get the value of this input element and save it in the variable. I'm going to get the value of this input element, save in the variable, same here. I'm going to build my message and then change the inner HTML of the paragraph to that message. Oh, this should work. Okay, size, small, topping one, bacon, cheese, place order. Yay, your small pizza with bacon and cheese will be ready soon. Okay, no pop-up windows. I can change this, large, um, pepperoni, and onions. Your large pizza with pepperoni and onions will be ready soon. So every time I click this button, it, re it runs this code again, right? So it'll look at the input element, it gets current value, and then we build the message and output it. Super cool. Okay. Um, yeah, that's important. Make sure the input process output is inside your function. I know I've had some people before that, that this input stuff somehow snuck outside of the function. And if you do that, it doesn't make sense at all because this code actually runs as soon as the page loads. All right? So if I save this, it's going to, I don't know what it's going to do. You repeat, well, if I type something in here, large, blah, 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 blah it's still blank. And that's because the value of the input element at this point in time is empty, right? It is, it, we have to put it inside the function so that it only runs this code when the button is clicked, right? Give the user time to type the, their, their options in and then they press the button and then we get the input. Okay, hope that made sense. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.